bit of a case of the chronic shakes, I do say. Right, so the hydropower, what is it? The hydropower is essentially an auxiliary two-speed transmission, which could be adapted to the back end of any engine, basically, in a checkerboard series tractor. And this was first introduced in 1960, whenever the release of the 1800 or 1900 occurred. Now, Oliver advertised this as a 26% ground speed decrease, but a 36% pulling power increase, whenever in the underdrive position. So if your tractor became too overwhelmed with a load at hand, or overloaded as the term goes, all you had to do was pull back on that lever, as it is in the position now, like so. The clutch engaged and the tractor in motion, you could do that, regardless of whether, actually, if you take it out of gear, for just experimentation purposes, and if you ever purchase an Oliver, or if you have an Oliver and you're still kind of wondering what this is, you don't have to put it into gear to find out. You can, and that's a better, um, I guess, a visual of how it works, but you can sit here and watch the chain speed at idle as you move the lever back and forth. Granted, you have to give it time for the fluid to change the gears and uh, let it do its thing for about a few seconds. Now, one thing that I get really nitpicky about is the fact that people get it confused with the power booster, which is installed in the Oliver 770 and 880, the three digits. They were not implemented on anything smaller or larger. And the difference between the hydraulic shift, the three speed, now instead of the two-speed lever being mounted here, the three-speed lever is mounted alongside the throttle handle here. On the early 1800 and 1900, or the A and B series, that's a whole nother story, the hydropower handle is hooked up right here and actually goes through the dash tower down below instead of through just the upper dash panel here. On the small frame tractors, on the 1655 and below, it's more or less the same concept as the 1800-1900. They just did not revise it to make it as fancy as this. Another difference between the 2-speed and 3-speed, a 3-speed is a 20% decrease or increase depending on position of where it is on ground speed, but also 20% increase or decrease, once again, with the amount of pullage, as I'm going to deem it, or the amount of grunt that you're going to get from your engine. As shown right here from my book of advertisements, Considering I'm about ready to lose my daylight, I'm going to try to squeeze in as much information else as I can. Now, the hydraulic shift, the over-under, which is its other nickname, or the three-speed, the hydropower, the two-speed, and some people call this over-under, which is incorrect, since the three-speed has the over and under and direct. This is just direct and under. But right here is your dipstick for checking oil. Help if I could pull it out. And of course, I need to add some, like badly. So I'm going to go do that here. Go do that here in a few minutes. Um, but that's where you're going to fill it. That's where you're going to check your oil. And over on the other side of the machine is your oil filter. I apologize in advance, folks. This segment, I was supposed to go look up the quality of the fluid you're supposed to use, the intervals of service, and whatnot like that. Filter number. Um, I forgot to. And number two. I don't have a book that describes that. You can use ATF, ATF Type A. I just don't know how many quarts and what filter number, like as I've said. I just don't know any of that, so sorry. That's a whole other video I've been to later if people enjoy this or not because I'm a complete idiot, but I'm trying my best. Um, the power booster uses the fluid from the rear end on the tractor, so you don't need to change the oil unless you change the rear end oil. This does not. This is a separate oil reservoir. If you were like on my 1950 here, if you didn't want any of those, the hydropower or three-speed, but on a 1950 you could not get a three-speed. It was just a hydropower or a straight shaft like this. This is what you get. You're going to get the standard transmission and a standard drive shaft. Nothing more. Right, now time for a little operation video. The portion of how to use it, per se. So to see this in operation, I'm just going to let off on the clutch. It's an underdrive. This or not, but when I push this in, this, that chain is going to speed up. Yeah, I caught it. Cool. So I'm back in underdrive. It does not matter where you start, whether it's in direct or under, it does not matter. I'm going to go to third gear. I'm in third gear. 
watch the speedometer when I push that lever in. Pull that off on the clutch, take off. I'm in underdrive. I just increased. What I meant by that is that the speed difference will be much more marginal as the RPMs increase, but the percentage will always remain the same of decrease. One point I'm going to note to everybody is that what, whatever transmission you have, be careful when you go down hills. I'll, I'll give you a good example. Fourth gear, direct drive, flat on the clutch, underdrive. Was increasing speed when I was in underdrive when I should have in theory been decreasing that's that's due to the sprag clutch these tractors have a sprag clutch for their underdrive like I said it doesn't matter if you have a power booster a hydropower or a three speed if you're driving down the road mowing with it I don't care what you're doing if you're using underdrive you need to heed that that is a sprag clutch you will take off going down a hill brakes or use direct or overdrive if you just have a two-speed use direct considering it's horrendously cold out here right now I'm going to just quickly go over the three-speed which is sitting right in front of me this is actually going to go in that 1950 that has a straight shaft but as you can see it's base it's the exact same housing pretty close it's pretty close to the exact same housing except for the fact that it houses different clutches and it's three speed instead of a two now obviously that being said there's more linkage and gears and whatnot in there I just went over it's got plenty of, I'm just gonna say that it's got more stuff inside of it it's got more surprises to have but this is the lever right here that moves it and correct right now it is in overdrive why is my focus not focusing that's what I want to know. There we go, that's a little better. But that lever moves back two more positions for direct and underdrive. And if you push, excuse me, if you if you were to lift the lever on the dash, this would push this little lever here forwards, which would go from under to direct to overdrive. Uh, let me set the flashlight somewhere. For example, this is in direct or overdrive. That's direct. That's under. That's if you are lowering the lever on the dash. So it's an under, direct, over. Not that hard. Apparently it is for me though because I'm not good at explaining stuff. I can fix stuff but I can't explain it very well. And even then, having issues fixing some stuff right now. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you all had a <clears throat> great time in watching it, seeing me goof up, give you some details explaining the best I can on how it works. Yes, this shed is being built. I forgot the dimension size, but it is a lean-to shed and it is, ex is absolutely humongous and I am stuttering like crazy because it is cold out here. It's like 30 degrees and dropping considering the sunset, so whoop-de-doo. I better get this shed closed up, so have a nice day, guys. Subscribe, like, do what you gotta do. Show me the 11. <laughs>
they're both in good condition but the Toro it runs and drives it smokes a little bit and there's a carb issue with it so it doesn't run more than five ten minutes and then it dies I'm kind of guessing it's some sort of vapor lock or something something's wrong with the uh, float there's some sort of restriction of fuel but it could probably be solved with either a new carburetor or a good carb clean I've cleaned it three times and it still didn't help so yeah come get it out of here will you same goes for the Ford mower deck and the John Deere 420 parts. That entire tractor is parts and it's for sale. I think there's a few pieces that I'm not selling. So is the wide front end. If you want it, come get it. I got a price for it. It's kind of a rare front end too, so be prepared to give a little bit of change for it.